the practice. Every previous Daytona record is broken, but not before the Big D takes its toll. Race day. And over 80,000 motor fans crowd this great 450-acre speedway to see what the best of Detroit can do. Pre-race festivities are climaxed by a trophy presentation from Speedway President Bill France to Pure Oil President Robert L. Milligan for Pure Oil Company's outstanding contribution to stock car racing. The Daytona 500 is the first major event of the new model year, and all the great drivers and the best of equipment are here. The 46 entries line up, two by two, in the order of their qualifying speed. The drivers stand by their cars with no eyes for the last of the parade going by. The moment before a race is the time when drivers are most alone. Richard Petty is ready. Fireball Roberts. Paul Goldsmith. Jim Herdebees. Jimmy Pardue. Dan Gurney. Ready. The starter gives a signal, and the best drivers in the country with $5 million of equipment move out for the parade lap before a running start. Pace car, Goldsmith and number 26 Plymouth and Petty number 43 Plymouth, first row. Junior Johnson, number three Dodge and Pardue, number 54 Plymouth, second row. The pace car pulls off the track, the field picks up speed, and the race is on. Going into the first turn, it's wheel to wheel. Goldsmith jumps out in front, and Petty slips into his wind stream right behind him. Bobby Isaac, number 26 Dodge, charges into third. Maurice Petty, Richard's brother, and Lee can only stand by now and watch. The field stretches out as the leaders hit a speed of 180 miles per hour on the backstretch. Goldsmith takes lap one, but not by much. Petty is moving up. Petty passes. battle for second place. Goldsmith, Isaac, Pardue. Goldsmith falls back. Pardue and Isaac are still fender to fender. and number 26 Dodge breaks loose from Pardue and charges after Petty. Isaac catches Petty. Can he pass? Bobby Isaac takes first place, but Petty stays with him. Pours it on and barrels past Isaac to run in front again. After 10 laps, the average speed is over 172 miles per hour, breaking all 500 mile records. The race is young, anything can happen. 475 miles to go. The leaders begin to lap the field. Trying to stay with the leaders, other drivers go all out to stay within striking distance. Fireball Roberts, number 22 Ford, has transmission trouble. In the first 40 minutes of the race, 16 cars run out of iron. 
500 miles on this track is the equivalent of 100,000 miles on the highway. As the 100 mile mark comes up, it's Richard Petty running in first, Dave Pearson number six dog second, Foyt 004 Ford right after him, and Parnelli Jones 15 Mercury fourth, Panch 21 Ford fifth. The average speed is still better than 172 miles an hour. 100 miles, and the leaders pit. Petty the first charges down the pit wall. But Dick finds Buck Baker in another Petty car, number 41, in the Petty pit area. Buck was supposed to pit after Dick, but he ran out of gas sooner than expected. One crew, two cars to be serviced. A tough break. While the Petty team sweats out the fueling and the precautionary tire changes on both cars, other crews work frantically on Petty's competition. Seconds lost in the pits have to be made up the hard way on the track. And time gained can win the race. Point with a 30-second stop is the first of the leaders to roar away. Pearson charges right after him in second place. At the 173 mile an hour pace, it takes only 52 seconds to go around this two and a half mile course. After a minute and a half in the pits, number 41 and 43 finally get underway, and Petty has dropped to 15th place. Now it's his turn to chase the leaders. he does. Rim riding this high bank track flat out at 175 miles an hour. Oh, Dave Pearson hits the wall, coming into the main straightaway. He's all right. And he wants to stay that way. The caution signal slows the field while the track is clear. They're off and running again, and Petty is still charging. Only one car stands between him and first place, Goldsmith. And on lap 52, Petty passes to take the lead again. You can imagine an automobile running 150 to 175 miles an hour. Running an engine at that high RPM has got to really be made uh, beyond uh, what an ordinary fella knows that it takes on the highway. And if you can get a car to run from 5 to 700 miles from the racetrack, you can bet you a bottom dollar that from then on out you can run from 75 to 100,000 miles on the highway and not have any trouble with it. more lap to go, and Richard Petty is still moving along easy and strong. Richard has one lap lead over second, two laps over third and fourth. The crowd cheers as Richard Petty and his number 43 Plymouth takes the checkered flag going away. Richard Petty rolls into the winner's circle as his father did five years ago. The jubilant Petty crew runs to greet him. This is their victory, too. They who have worked so long and so hard for the big one. This has been a great show for Plymouth, who ran one, two, three. Hardu was second, and Goldsmith third. Miss Firebird presents the victory flag, 
and for the petties, Lee and Richard, there's nothing like checkered flags to make happy time. Besides the trophies, Richard Petty earned $33,300 in three hours, 14 minutes, and 23 seconds. Yes, three hours and a quarter on the track and months of preparing, hoping, and planning. But this is only the beginning of the start of a busy Grand National season. On dirt and paved tracks, on half a mile and longer circuits, the same cars and drivers follow the championship trail. And for the Petties, there are only brief stopovers at Randleman. There isn't much time for Richard to relax with his young but growing family and his trophies. The Petties have run in 25 races in the few months up to the Charlotte 600 at the end of May. And the Petties have done pretty well, finishing in the top five in 13 out of 25 starts. With this record behind them, there's an air of quiet excitement as the Petties get ready for the World 600. One and 43 are set up for the move to Charlotte, and the equipment truck rolls out of the Randleman garage to take its place in the garage area at the Charlotte Speedway. The crew has a feeling of confidence that comes with being on a winning team. But the best of plans in racing have a way of going astray, and the competition is plenty tough. This is the main event of the rematch for the honors lost and won at Daytona. four starters in the fastest field ever at the 600. In the pole position, another Plymouth. Pardue in car number 54, the fastest qualifier. Cars are lined up in the order of time and speed they qualify. Back in fifth position is Richard Petty in number 43 Plymouth. Back in twelfth is Jim Pascal, Richard's teammate in number 41 Plymouth. It's a hot day in May in North Carolina with temperatures in the 90s and promises to be even hotter before this 600 mile. At 12.30 p.m. May 24th, the World 600 begins. the track to form in position, and they're off to a beautiful running start. Into the first turn, it's Pardue in front, Isaacs in number 26, Dodge second, Lorenzen, Petty, and Goldsmith dueling for third, with Marvin Pants right after them. The rest of the field springs out, 600 miles to go for the glory of coming home first, and a total purse of over 100,000 miles. It's a Chrysler battle for first place with the lead changing 10 times between Plymouth and Dodges. When cars pit, the race still goes on. Fuel and tires in less than half a minute. Runners go charging back into the track. Paul Goldsmith, the number 25 Plymouth, grabs the lead and then loses it to Bobby Isaac and number 26 Dodge. Buck Baker moves up to third place in number three Dodge. 
Freddie Lorenzen in number 28 Ford charges after him and fourth. Buck Baker in his number three Dodge roars past Goldsmith to run in front. Lorenzen is running in third. At the midway point, 300 miles, it's Goldsmith and Lorenzen dueling for first. Baker has dropped back to third. Lorenzen passes Goldsmith to take first. Pasco in number 41 Plymouth makes his move. Uh oh, trouble! Cooper in number 64 spins out. 400 miles. And Pasco pours it on, charging after Lorenzen. Jim Pasco passes Lorenzen to take the lead as Lorenzen's crew worry what their car will do at this terrific pace. Richard Petty has moved up to third in number 43, Clement. Oh, Lorenzen's in trouble. He's heading into the pits. Now the signal from the Petty pit is go. And it's Pascal and Petty running one and two for the last 75 miles. And the checkered flag for Jim Pascal in number 41, Clement. Richard is only a split second behind his teammate. A great victory for the Petty team and Clement. In this contest with the best of Detroit, they prove they not only have the speed, but the staying power. Together, Jim Pascal and Richard Petty get the lion's share of the $100,000 purse. But the glory of coming home first is Pascal's alone in a great victory that the motoring world will not soon forget. I think anybody wins one of these uh, large races, a 500 mile or 600 mile race is accomplished uh, quite a feat because he's running against the best that uh, the automotive field can put out and get out and run as fast or faster than anybody else. I think it's quite accomplished but in itself, uh, plus you get a lot of satisfaction beating all competition.